What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Bruja Africana, coming to you with the sixth and final video for this portion of the series of um, reparations versus the beheading of the gatekeepers. I think I'm going to continue to do these series like this, um, so look out for more of those. The next one I want to do is Aaliyah's connection to this. But anyway, let's talk about Usher and his nefarious plot to be the king of R&B, hell, to be the king at all. Usher is in a space where, shit, he's not the king. He's not the top R&B artist. He is not that top nigga that he once was. Y'all know when the time was when Usher was, everything he jumped on was ghost pepper hot. Everything he recorded, sold out, gave motherfucking, did numbers. Usher used to do numbers. Well, that was in the past. These things have passed on. And Usher is just, you know, considered an older artist and he can't take that. It's not that he's fallen off, but it's a thing of Usher wanting to be the uh, most spoken of, most exalted, most decorated R&B person or R&B singer, excuse me, amongst the likes of the guys that are around now. But more um, most pressingly for um, Usher is he wants to be spoken of as the king when standing next to Chris Brown. See, all the rest of the guys, like the Jacquees, the um, Trey Songs. By the way, we're going to do a Trey Songs reading because Trey Songs is the villain that people keep painting Chris Brown out to be. But anyway, Usher, you know, sees Chris Brown as a direct threat to his title as the king of R&B. Y'all know in Michael, that Michael Jackson gave... Uh, the crown of Chris Brown. Well, Usher didn't like that. So, you know, that's why he was fake crying at Michael Jackson's funeral, trying to remind people, yo, I'm Usher. Remember me? Remember y'all used to fuck with me? And that's just what's going on with him now. He's looking back over his career and he's thinking, damn, where did I lose my fans? Where did not necessarily lost them, but a lot of Usher's fans grew up. A lot of Usher's main core of his fans are his age, 45, 46 years old. Niggas then grew up. Usher doesn't, while he's not shunning that portion of his fame, that part reminds him that his heyday is over. And he's feeling like now he's a outsider looking in on a R&B world that he feel like he helped contribute to building. He's having a little bit of creator's block. You know, he's recycling these old songs. He doesn't have any new dance moves to, to give us. And by the way, y'all, Usher can't really dance. He just know how to move. That's his other side of the jealousy against Chris Brown. Chris Brown can really fucking dance. Usher can move around. That's it. He used to flip back in the day like Chris Brown, but he stopped doing it because the nigga got old. So now he's trying to figure out what can I do? What, what can I do to, you know, easily get people back? He is not interested in working hard. He is not interested in rebranding himself as a new usher because y'all see he's coming out with the same cadence, same bullshit he was doing for the last 15, 20 years that he's been active in front of us. He has nothing new to offer us. So he's trying to think like, look, what can I do other than something nefarious, something nefarious to change the fate for Chris Brown? There's Chris Brown showing up as the Taurus in the Hierophant car. He's thinking, you know, how can I knock this nigga out of the way? What can I do to um, take his title, take his crown? He's got to behead the king. So Usher turns to Diddy. And I told y'all Diddy was hooked up in all of these situations that we're speaking of. Diddy has been around or in the circle of all of these people that are showing up in these reads. So Usher reaches out to Diddy. Diddy suggests to him, you know, Chris Brown's already seen as a demon. And this is just the devil card, the death card, here, fan, and the page of wands. Did he suggest go back into, you know, using the magic that we've been using to be able to overtake Chris? See, Diddy couldn't get Chris Brown in his bed, so Diddy got a problem with Chris Brown already. He already got an axe to grind, and he's like, we got to get this nigga gone because Chris Brown knows about the shit that they're doing. So they fashioned this thing. You know, I know that they, Usher and Chris Brown, were supposedly friends for years, but that wasn't it. Usher was supposed to be the handler that was supposed to get Chris Brown to come over and sleep with Diddy. It did not happen that way. 
And when things were not being going the way that Diddy needed Usher to do them, you know, the way he did Justin Bieber, we're going to do one on Justin Bieber too, because he's crashing the fuck out as we speak. But when Diddy couldn't, I'm sorry, when Usher couldn't deliver Chris Brown to Diddy, Diddy took off. Diddy lost interest in Usher after, you know, being his boy toy for years. He like, yo, I wanted somebody new and you couldn't even deliver that. So he replaced Usher with Justin Bieber. Justin was brought around um, Puff by Usher and Usher left him there and Justin somehow took his place. Puff began to pour energy into Justin Bieber. You know what he mean by pouring energy, honey? He got these niggas bent over. So Usher is out of the fold now. Chris has become a thorn in his side because now Diddy ain't fucking with him. Their relationship ain't but so close now. You know, Diddy might call him or call on him every now and again, you know. Diddy did the very same thing to Usher that I've been saying in each and every video. He he targeted Usher because he knew where Usher had come from, and he was a young, hungry artist. So, of course, y'all remember the flavor camp. Let's talk about why they are connected to each other. Usher learned everything that he is using against Chris Brown or using to destroy Chris Brown at the flavor camp. There is Puff in his opportunities and his money and working with people and actually putting Usher in front of people that he can be worked by. OK, I don't want to say worked with because Usher and been passed around, too, which is why he wears sunglasses in most of his interviews. He doesn't want you to see his real personality or see who he truly is. He doesn't want y'all to see that demon that's within him. He wants to continue to have this image of this squeaky clean guy or this guy that doesn't do much when in actuality, Usher been in on this shit the whole time. As soon as Puff started introducing him to that lifestyle and that three of cups being present and that three of coins and Puff began to give him money for his work, basically Usher was pimped out just like the rest of these boys. That was when things began to work for Usher. But then somehow Usher began to feel guilty about maybe the things that he was doing. And it has nothing to do with um, him feeling guilty about taking Chris's head off. No, because in that Queen of Swords stance, he is all the way, all the way in his feelings. But it's something about Usher wanting to make sure that other men or younger men went through the exact same thing he went through with Diddy so that they would maybe... And not have anything to hold over his head is what I'm feeling. They wouldn't have anything to hold against him because they too have allowed Diddy to ease in between their ass cheeks too. So the Queen of Swords is present because Diddy may have stopped fucking with him in that way. And when Diddy stopped fucking with him in that way and started really focusing his attention on other younger feminine boys, Usher got jealous. Usher got to the point like, damn, Whereas that he used to come fuck with me and help me out. He's stalling me out now. Puff ain't interested in me because I'm over 40 years old. Usher's starting to see things dwindle around him. Meanwhile, he's seeing Chris Brown blow up. He's seeing Chris Brown still have career longevity, despite him having these issues, you know, being arrested, having these domestic violence charges, everything that has been put in Chris's way or in his path, he's overcome. And now Usher has decided, you know what, I'm going to definitely reach back in this bag of what Diddy has taught me. Not about the sexual shit, shit, because he couldn't get Chris with that shit. That's part of the problem. They couldn't fuck on Chris. These men couldn't screw him. So now Usher is running with the fact of, oh, let's use his past against him. Let's destroy him in that way. You know, Usher knows how to work women. He feels like women are stupid. I don't know why y'all are all up his ass and kissing his ass because he really thinks lowly of women and he feels justified in the fact that he is about to ruin relationships that Chris Brown has built the relationship between them first of all he doesn't give a shit about he was lying about him being his friend in the first place it was all about manipulation and I also feel like it was a thing of Chris Brown was supposed to be Usher's sacrifice had he been able to sacrifice Chris Brown Usher would be the top R&B nigga right now and the fact that Michael Jackson crowned Chris had to have pissed, had to have pissed Usher off. Because here's Chris standing here as the king of wands. 
Usher still remains as the magician with the Seven of Swords energy. Those those toxic energies, it's like, okay, well, let me see how I can manipulate him. So Usher began to secretly tell Chris's business, get to know Chris, find out what he got going on. And when the perfect moment strikes or when the most inopportune moment strikes, that is when he would use against him. Of course, he's going to use the things with the women against him. I, for one, feel like when Usher and Chris Brown were hanging out, Usher may have put some some women in Chris Brown's play in Chris Brown's path that have helped build these stories of him being super abusive and super ridiculous towards women. Now, I'm not saying that Chris didn't do these things, but these women were sent as a plant by Usher to continue to put something in Chris's path so that he can make mistakes. And that's exactly what he's been doing. That's not good enough for Usher, though. He's seen Chris go through these things. He's seen Chris um, literally out here fighting to save his career, but that's not good enough. See, Chris still has loyal um, fans. Like I said, Usher is the oldest nigga. He's being resent. He he's 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 around the age of you know those older people where they play his music only in the club where the old people go. He didn't want that. So he made sure that he attacked another relationship that Chris had going, Chris and Tiana Taylor. He made sure that he became excruciatingly close to Tiana Taylor, made sure that he was close and romanticized every woman that come up on the stage that might be cool with Chris Brown so that they can turn their backs on him when some more shit occurs with Chris Brown. And that's exactly what happened. People begin to go against Chris Brown in the industry and not only in the industry, the fans begin to do it. Usher made sure to put himself in position next to Hove because he knew that Hove still does not like Chris Brown because of the fight with Rihanna. So Usher is the uh, main, main target here, y'all. I'm sorry, he's the main person doing shit and Chris Brown is the target. Chris Brown has a target on his back from his former friend his former friend, Usher. And it didn't help that Chris Brown beat him the fuck up. I know that they are denying this fight happened, but child, I'm telling you from inside sources, okay? Usher got his ass beat. That's what that five of wands is about. And it might have been a thing that it was some jumping going on, but Usher got his ass whooped, okay? And he got his ass whooped because Chris had asked him and Tiana to leave and they didn't want to leave because they came there to drop that plot there or they came to plant that seed there. And from that moment, it became forward motion. Usher has this, this uh, he's behind the um, complaint about Chris being so violent now too. He can't be worked with. See, Usher is thinking long term. But Chris ain't going to go out with a fight, y'all. Y'all better believe with the chariot card, the three of wands, and the eight of wands present, y'all can get ready to prepare for a battle of the singing niggas because what it's going to do is, because we see the uh, hip-hop arena coming under attack, it is going to usher in, no pun intended, it's going to usher in a new round of R&B singers. It's going to open the door back up to R&B. So the plot isn't going to work exactly in Usher's favor. But because Chris will no longer be standing alone as the only king, it is going to cause some disruptions in R&B. And it's going to make these niggas sing again. So y'all going to get ready and prepare for a long battle of the singing niggas. Chris get ready to put some shit out again. And Usher going to put some shit out again. Maybe these niggas will sing their ass off. All right, y'all.